Hey everyone, it's Blake with Fishbait. In this video, I'm going to walk through an upcoming feature that was demoed at Empower 2025 called Smart Fields. Smart Fields is one of the next features that will be released that uses the Laserfish AI. It has some awesome capabilities and I'm excited to show it to you today. Shout out to Laserfish for giving me early access to it so I can make this video. Also, please keep in mind that this is a pre-release version, so some things might change by the time it's released. Smart Fields is expected to be available for Laserfish Cloud on June 5th of 2025 and on Laserfish self-hosted subscription systems in fall of 2025. Let's take a look. All right, so to start, I have a few different documents in my Laserfish Cloud system. You can see here I've got an invoice, I've got some resumes and a few other documents. I'm just going to focus on the invoice and the resumes for this demo. So I've actually gone through ahead of time, I've set up a couple of templates to use with AI. So I'll walk through how the extraction actually happens, and then we'll go and look in the um, administration side, and I will show you how you actually configure it to pull that data. So the first one, let's take a look at the invoice. So if we open this up, I've got an invoice here, pretty standard invoice. It's, it's pretty easy. There isn't a lot of information on it. You may have more difficult invoices to extract data from. I have seen a lot of demos with um, harder documents than this. And SmartFields has done a really good job of extracting that data. So I urge you when you're able to get your hands on this to get in and play with it. Um, I've seen some demos with player cards where they've taken a picture at different angles and the player cards have kind of a holographic look to them. And it's been able to actually extract data from those as well. So again, even though this is an easy invoice, uh, don't let that distract you from how powerful Smart Fields is. So with this invoice, I've gone through, like I said, and I set up a couple templates beforehand. So I'm going to choose my Invoices AI template. And you can see here, I've used the new designer. I've got some fields side by side. I have a table. So I'm going to be extracting vendor name. I'm not extracting the vendor ID. I don't have that hooked up to anything, but it should be able to pull all the vendor address information as well as the invoice information, including the line items, and then the gross amount and the tax amount. And I'll tell you here in a moment what this math check actually does. So to actually have Smart Fields kick off, you'll see that I have this button up here for extract values. So this means that Smart Fields has been configured with this specific template. So I'm just going to click this. And you'll see it'll change to extracting, letting me know that it's working. And in just a moment, there we go. It has gone through and looked at this document in the repository and extracted the different values from it. So you can see here I got the vendor name, the address information, invoice number, invoice date. We have our line item data. So it did add a new row in my table for each line item. I have the gross amount and then also tax amount, which there are no taxes on this invoice. So you can see how easy that is. You just click the button, it goes and it does its thing and pulls back the information for you. The last field on here is the math check. And actually what that's doing is it's actually not looking at the document at all. It is looking at the data that was extracted from the document and making a computation. So I've told this math check field to actually go through and total up all the line item totals as well as the tax amount and verify that it matches the gross amount. And if it does, I told it to change the math check to yes. If not, then it would change it to no. So you can do some things like that where it's playing off of different data to be able to select the value for that field. So some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we will go ahead and close that. So now let's look at a resume. 
Um, so I'm actually going to come down here to Wolverine. So I have a resume for Wolverine here. Just having a little fun with some stuff. You can see we've got some information up at the top about who the resume is for. We have our career summary, highlights, experience, education, technical skills. So again, I've gone through and I have configured a resume AI template. So same thing. You can see here the different information that I'm gathering and we have the extract values button again. I'll go ahead and click that. This may take a little bit longer to go through um, and populate the values for the fields because there's more information that it's trying to determine. So we'll give that a moment here to do its thing. And there we go. So you can see it grabbed the first name, last name, the contact information. I basically just told it to grab everything. You could parse that out into, you know, location, phone number, email address, that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't too, con too concerned about that for this demo. The experience, you can see here, there's three different career experiences that they entered, and it went through and grabbed all three. Entered that into the table for me. And we have the summary of education. So it went through and it grabbed the information about the education section. And then the next one is actually kind of cool. Again, I wanted to try different things with smart fields to see how far I could kind of push it with different ideas that I had. So this one actually takes the summary of education field and translates it to Spanish. So again, it's not reading the Spanish off of the resume document itself. It's taking what was extracted and then translating that. So again, something else that you can kind of play with, look at the different data that's been extracted and play with that information. The movies played, I'll explain that here just in a second, but this field wasn't meant to use on this resume. This was another thing that I was trying out. So I actually have another resume for Darth Vader. And so here you can see I've already run the extraction. I did that because this has been hit and miss for me. I probably need to be a little bit more specific about how this field works. But what I wanted to try and do was see if I could use the data extracted and have Laserfish AI do a search on the internet and pull values back. Um, and it works most of the time, like what I said. So what I did is I told this field to take the applicant who the resume is for and return back all the Star Wars movies that that applicant has been in. And so you can see here that it's actually come back with different movies that Darth Vader has been in. So again, really cool idea. It has been hit and miss, like I mentioned, for this specific one. I could probably do a better job at defining things. But it gives you an idea of what you can do. So now that we've seen how it works, let's go look at the back end and see how we actually configure this. So to do that, we go to the repository administration. And you go to the metadata page. And you'll notice on the first tab for fields, there is a new column. We have auto extract, and you can see that some of these are set to yes. The ones that are set to yes are the ones from the demos that I just showed you. So these apply either to the invoice template or they apply to the resume template. You can also, when you're creating a template, if we go into the new designer and you and that will turn on the smart fields capability right there. As soon as you turn that on, the description for the field is also required. So keep that in mind. And the description is how you want to tell Laserfish AI or smart fields to extract data for that field. How does it need to look at the document that this template is applied to to be able to pull that information? So that's what I've done on all of these, except for, like I said, the vendor ID.
But let's go ahead and back up just a moment here. Let's go back to the fields. And if we go into, let's say, first name, now you can see that this isn't read only and I can edit it. And you can see the descriptions that I've used. So again, the first thing that you do is check the box to automatically extract values. And then you come in and give it the description of how you want it to find the correct information off the document. You can see mine is a little long. Um, and you also may be thinking to yourself, Blake, I'm not good with coming up with these descriptions to pull that information off. You know, how, how did you come up with that? So I was thinking about that one day as I was running these tests, and I decided, well, I know on the back end, Laserfish uses different chat GPT things or other AI sources. And so I decided, why not just ask chat GPT how it would suggest that I prompt it to pull the information off? So that's what I did. I just went into the chat. You can see here the first one I said, if I wanted a chat GPT to find the invoice number on an invoice image, what prompt should I give it? And it actually gave me a couple different things. So the first one was, you know, try this specific prompt. Please look at this image and tell me the invoice number. It might be labeled as invoice NO, invoice pound sign, or something similar. And then it gave me some optional ideas as well. So if there are multiple numbers, choose the one closest to the label, or most prominently place near the top or in a box. So it was kind of cool that it actually said here is the basic prompt that you should give and here's some additional things to make it more specific and i did that for all of them so i came in um, asked it for the vendor's name vendor's address and you can see it gave something specific or an additional information for each one of them as well i also did it for the resume so somewhere down here i actually get to the resume as well but that's how I created my different descriptions, is just using ChatGPT. Um, also keep in mind, you could use ChatGPT and then alter it, right, as much as you need to, to make it fit. Gross amount, here's what I did for that. Um, and I didn't use the entire prompt, I didn't tell it to look at the image, I took that part off and pasted it in there, and you saw how it worked, it actually worked pretty well. There's probably a few where I could go through and put some additional details in to tell it what to look for, what not, look, what not to look for, just like what ChatGPT suggested. So if you need a jumping off point, that's a good one to start with. It's worked really well for what I needed. Um, let's look at a couple things here. So the first one is the translate. So here's that summary of education field where I had it translate to Spanish. So you can see the prompt I gave it was translate the value in the summary of education field to Spanish. And it just took that value and it translated it for me. So did an awesome job. Haven't had any issues with that. And then the other one was the math check. So here's the math check one. So validate that the line item quantity multiplied by the unit price equals the total. Also validate that the total of all line items combined plus the tax amount equals the gross amount. If it does, select yes. If it does not, select no. So you are able to do different things like that with smart fields, laser fishing, to give it more information than what's just on that document. So some pretty cool options that you have there. Some other things that I've wanted to play with I haven't gotten the chance to yet is seeing if I could point it to maybe an open source API or website specifically. So for example, the Star Wars resume, if I could point it to a Star Wars website to pull its data from, you know, how well would that work? Hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what's coming in the next little while and in a couple of months to self-hosted with smart fields. Hopefully it gets you excited, gives you some ideas. Um, that you can start thinking about of how you might implement this in your own system. I will also say if you are having smart fields fill in different types of fields, such as like the summary of education, 
make sure your width is set correctly. I left mine at 40. If I actually went back and tried to save what it extracted from the document, I get a warning message. So definitely make sure that your width that is allowed is set accordingly so it can, get the, it can save that information the way that it needs to. Another thing that Laserfish has talked about with the smart fields is being able to use workflow. So as part of that, some of the capabilities that might be included as workflow activities would be things like being able to summarize a document, describe an Im image, translate, and different things like that. So be looking for that as well and how you might be able to use those different features within your system. So again, hopefully you learned something new, you got some great ideas for the things that are coming and it's got you excited. As always, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, keep fishing.